Y'all with me? Yeah. Matthew 5, 43 through 45. And Ralph, if you could help me, uh, that'd be great. You've heard what it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. Now look at this. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. Right. And he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So I need to pray for the people that hurt me. See, prayer not only changes your situation, it changes your heart. So you missed it. Prayer just doesn't change your situation, it changes your heart. I tell people all the time, it's hard to pray for someone that you hate, and it's hard to hate someone that you pray for. When I pray for somebody, my heart changes for them. It's different. I, I can't pray with my teeth grinding my teeth. I can't. My like, God, I'm praying you touch them and, and just you know, give them love for something. No, when I find myself praying to that person, then, then, then my perspective changes. He reminds me that people who are hurting tend to hurt other people. I said people that are hurting tend to hurt other people. Yeah. So I find myself say, God, what kind of hurt are they dealing with that they would want to hurt me? Prayer may or may not change them, but it will change you. Yeah. I got to hurry. Psalm 34, 17 through 19, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from all. And then Psalm 137, verse 3, he heals God. He heals the brokenhearted. And he binds up the wounds. He has a lot of you. He's close. He hasn't abandoned you. He's still there. In fact, if you're brokenhearted, he's closer to you than you think. I said he's closer to you than you think. Amen. Then 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. Give it all to him. All your anxiety. All your troubles. All your fears. All your troubles. All your pain. All your hurt, give it all to him. And you've heard me say this before. Sometimes we have our hurts or anxieties when we read that scripture, cast all your anxiety on him. And we're like, here you go. When in all reality, we're, we still hold on to it. And we need to get to the point where we cast our anxiety. That's kind of a 3D moment for those watching right now. <laughs> we cast that anxiety. We let it go. We gotta let it go. And put it in his hands. Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. I probably don't. I probably don't. And you don't know what I've been through. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this, that God's greater than it all. And it's not my responsibility to get revenge. It's not my responsibility to pay it back. It's not my responsibility to make that more miserable than I was. It is my responsibility to act like a child of God. And when I'm hurt, and when I'm going through some trouble, I can say, God, I just need to give this all to you. God, you are acquainted with sorrows. You are acquainted with grief. You are mad sorrows. You've been through it. You were hurt. You were betrayed. You were let down. People said bad things about you. And yet, God, you were perfect. God, give me that same spirit. Don't let the pain make you sin. Don't make the pain cause you to lash out and give up. Cast all your anxiety on him. Because 
because he cares for you.